So welcome to a brand new episode. I'm driving into work and I'm running behind. Only because I decided to hang a left instead of a right where I normally go and... Or no, I hung a right instead of a left. Why? I have no idea why. I was running by... Why is it when you're running behind, by the way, going to work, that you take a different route, thinking that somehow travel and distance is going to change itself and because you're running late if I go this other way maybe this morning it won't take me nearly as long to get to work of course I'm wrong I'm not late to be on the air I just like to get to the to the station within a certain period of time to do my notes and right now I am not so uh, because the way I went was entirely too long because again for some reason I was under the impression that if I went this way because I was running behind maybe I get there quicker and it didn't happen anyway so a minute ago I was listening to a demo CD. There's a talk show host who was wanting to fill in for me if I go on vacation. And, and they, you know, talk show hosts that aren't working or, or if they are fill-in hosts permanently, they just fill in for other hosts, you know, they'll reach out and say, hey, I'll fill in for you. Here's my demo CD. So I'm listening to the demo CD, and uh, the host was interviewing somebody. I don't know who it was. Uh, before the 2008 elections. And the person who was being interviewed made the comment that if Rudy Giuliani were to become president, he would sleep well at night. And then started to go into the example of New York City and how bad New York City was prior to Rudy Giuliani going in there and cleaning things up. And it got me thinking about how when you watch the old 80s movies that take place in New York City, how awful it is. How it's always portrayed as mean and angry and dirty and a lot of crime and violence. And, and nowadays, when you see New York City, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, Rudy Giuliani really did clean up the, the town, which got me thinking of our downtown and what we're dealing with here. I mean, we don't have that rampant crime, that visible crime. It's there. Uh, but it's not like what you'd see again in those 80, 80s movies in New York City. Now, New York City was a different was a different city, um, but it's not as visual. It's not it's not as easily seen. People live in their own little bubbles and don't realize what is going on if they don't read the paper and understand. Uh, you, you know, before you know it, we're in a situation that we're in now. I have a story for today's show, Tuesday's show. You'll be watching this on Wednesday, so hopefully you listened, or you'll hear the podcast. Um, I have a story about today's show talking about the rash of robberies, like 26 since the beginning of the year or something like this. Now, the the, the law enforcement has has grabbed at least 18 of the 26 six attempted, um, so a lot of arrests have been made, but there's no doubt that you know crime is going up and our law enforcement is doing the best that they can. Um, in the meantime, though, they're going to gut them again. I mean, they are. Unless you do something about it, you're going to reject that sales tax increase. And Mike Letcher is going to go and cut police and fire again. And I don't know what can be done between now and then. You know, it's funny because I was talking to Sean McCluskey was in studio, ran for city council and running the no on Prop 400 campaign. Prop 400 is the sales tax increase. And he said, what I always say in that is, well, we got to elect new leadership, and we do have to elect new leadership. We need a new city manager. We need a new city manager who's going to stop looking at all cities. Well, this is what's funny, is that he says he looks at all city services equally, like everybody that works for the city, he looks at them on an equal on an equal basis and then asks them to cut accordingly. So because police and fire take up so so much of our of our budget, we can we well everybody else is getting you know cut the same way so we have to cut police and fire the same way no it doesn't work that way these guys don't know how to prioritize and again it's because they don't really care about police and fire you know just a few people two city council members and a new city manager and we could have a different situation we could prioritize we could stop spending 30 million dollars in taxpayer subsidies to fund suntran and we could use that money to go to police and fire. We could get rid of Kidco. Yes, I said get rid of Kidco. Taxpayer subsidized daycare. It's unbelievable. It just takes a few people. That's what's so frustrating about this. And yet, it doesn't matter how many people you get to the city council meetings. And I'm not saying you shouldn't go. But it seems like it doesn't matter how many people you get down there. Those few people that need to be pushed to go a different direction just simply won't do it. I think our biggest problem right now, apart from the city council members, I mean, they're a bunch of idiots, but is is the fact that 
that we've got Mike Letcher as a city manager, and he wrote the budgets under Mike Hine, which wasn't what was which uh, wasn't much better. If we had a city manager that was actually proposing what needs to be done and was making the necessary cuts where they need to be made, we'd be in a much different situation right now. Back to my original point, though. Look, if New York City can get turned around, Tucson can get turned around. We have so much potential here, and we're just wasting it because a handful of people are placating a handful of people. It's all that it is. A couple of city council members and a city manager are trying to keep all the hippies in town happy because they feel like they hold the most influence. And it's just, it's just, it's a sad, sad shame because I think a lot of good people that would have been willing to enact that change are going to pack up and leave or they're going to have to because they're not going to be able to find a job here in town. So, woohoo, way to get going for a Tuesday morning before I go out in the air, huh? So, all right, there you go. Man, I'm running behind. <laughs> New episode on, uh, on Thursday. So, oh, and don't forget, I'm filling in for uh, Roger Hitchcock on Friday. We'll put those up as a podcast, Justice On Demand. Thanks for watching. Bye.